Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to day nine of the 31 progressive rock stocking stuffers from 1971. Taking a look at uh, all the prog rock albums released in 1971 that are celebrating 50 year anniversaries this year, right? 50 years old this year. I'm picking my 31 favorites, giving you one each day. So hopefully you got some stuff here you haven't heard before that you may want to get for Christmas or hopefully get for Christmas, have your loved ones stuff it in your stocking, hang it up on the mantle on the fireplace. If you've already had some of these, well, maybe it's time to go revisit them because, uh, you know, 50 year anniversary for some of these great albums. Why not? Right. It's a great time to go and reflect back on some killer music from 1971 before we move into January. January 1st, a whole new series for the month. We're going to take a look at those albums that turned 50 years old in 2022 from 1972. I'm going to take a look at my favorite albums from that year. All sorts of different genres. Right. So but here it's all about prog rock. So here this particular one released July 16th, 1971 for the Vertigo label produced by Tony Visconti. I actually just took a look. I, I was reading something about this. This is the longest album this band ever did in length. at just under 40 minutes long. It's crazy when you think about some of these great bands from the 70s did these like, you know, 35, 36, 37 minute albums. That's it. You know, nowadays it's like if you, you're lucky if you get something that's under an hour, right? But this was just under 40. Uh, the second album from Gentle Giant, Acquiring the Taste. I want to read you a passage here um, because, uh, and this was on the original album. Uh, this, you know, the band I think realized they had an album here that was just kind of extremely uncommercial, but they wanted to kind of, uh, you know, talk about their intent behind the album. It is our goal to expand the frontiers of contemporary popular music at the risk of being very unpopular. We have recorded each composition with the one thought, that it should be unique, adventurous, and fascinating. It has taken every shred of our combined musical and technical knowledge to achieve this. From the outset, we have abandoned all preconceived thoughts on blatant commercialism. Instead, we hope to give you something far more substantial and fulfilling. All you need to do is sit back and acquire the taste. Now, you know, I've talked to plenty of people in my life who... For whatever reason, they, they just can't seem to acquire the taste for this band. Uh, Gentle Giant aren't for everybody. They certainly aren't. This, the, none of their albums, you know, maybe some of the later ones a little bit, but they're not really easy listens. They're really complex. They're really out there. And it's just, quite frankly, unlike anything you'd ever heard before. Um, and, but that's what I love so much about them. It's just, just really interesting just really different music, you know, prog rock, yes, but they, you know, chamber music and classical and blues and jazz and hard rock and renaissance music and medieval music. I mean, it's just all folk, all tossed into a blender and boop, out comes Gentle Giant. So here we got uh, Gary Green on all sorts of guitars, electric and acoustic, uh, mandolin, little bass, uh, you know, Backing vocals, Carrie Manier on every kind of keyboard you can imagine, mini mode, piano, Hammond organ, mellotron, harpsichord, celeste, clavichord, xylophone, vibraphone, you know, all sorts of percussion, cello, lead vocals, backing vocals, Derek Shulman on uh, lead and backing vocals, alto saxophone, cowbell. Uh, we've got uh, Phil Shulman. You got the Shulman brothers here, all three of them on this album. You got Phil Shulman on clarinet, trumpet, alto and tenor sax, piano, uh, percussion, lead and backing vocals. You got Ray Shulman on bass guitar, violin, uh, viola, Spanish guitar, 12 string guitars, organ, bass pedals, backing vocals, and Martin Smith on drums and percussion. Whew, that's a lot of people appearing on here. Uh, you know, you got uh, th this album is um, really challenging for the listener because you've got all sorts of different flavors going on here, and every track kind of runs the gamut of styles and stuff. So, like Pentagruel's Nativity starts it off, one of my favorite tracks by the band. It's just kind of, you know, it's a little, you're listening to it, and it's kind of like weird sounding at the beginning, and you got these heavy guitar riffs coming in, and it's kind of got bits of jazzy, a little classical. It's like, Really a dramatic, kind of darker piece, but just so good. Uh, then you have The Edge of Twilight, which also kind of takes you down a bunch of different roads. The house, the street, the room kind of messing. Dun, 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 dun. It's kind of bluesy, kind of heavy, kind of jazzy, right? Then you got the brief uh, little, clever little acquiring the taste. Then, of course, you got Wreck. 
Great song. Really good song. Uh, the Moon is Down. Very mysterious song. They got Black Cat, the quirky, charming Black Cat. And then it finishes it off with the near eight minute long Plain Truth, which is kind of kind of bluesy, kind of heavy, certainly proggy. Got some great guitar solos from Gary Green. Lots of, of violin solos from Ray. Great song. Really good album. And this, you know, but this is not the kind of catchy, clever, gentle giant of like a free hand and in a glass house and an interview and it's it's not quite the really even like octopus and uh, three friends which came you know right after this are kind of dense and complex like this but this is a little bit of a darker album those I think are a little little brighter slightly more accessible but I, I love this album for all the reasons that I just said. I think you know it's, it's got the really interesting uh, album cover artwork, and uh, it's just it's it's one of the more like I said challenging listens in their catalog because of its complexity and it's just like 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 basically like I read it's just it's anti commercial as you get, but I love it for it. So uh, that is my pick for today: acquiring the taste from Gentle Giant, day number nine. Stay tuned for day number 10 tomorrow. Coming at you. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, this way you get notified. Also, if you click on that notification bell, you want to get notified of all of our videos. I get so many people who are like, uh, Pete, when are you going to talk about um, such and such an album in this series? I'm like, well, I just did it three days ago. Oh, I must have missed that episode. If you click on that notification bell, you won't miss any episode because this is a, a, going to be a fun series and each and every monthly series we do. So you want to make sure you don't miss any of the episodes, right? So make sure you click on that notification bell. You'll get an email every day when a, a, a new video is posted. And then uh, come on, check it out. Either watch it uh, on the live premiere and join us in the chat room or uh, you know check it out later on. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow morning with another one because we are here all the damn time. Thanks for watching. I'm Pete. Bye-bye.